So this video is step one of the How Surrogacy Works series. Uh, and we're discussing your IVF cycle and the process of conceiving your embryos. And because the first step of any surrogacy journey is to conceive several healthy embryos through an in vitro fertilization procedure. You know, these are the embryos that will ultimately be transferred to your surrogate and develop into your baby. Step one, conceiving your embryos. So to begin an IVF cycle, the intended parents, you know, often called the IPs, must visit their chosen IVF clinic to donate eggs and sperm. The eggs and sperm are combined in the clinic's embryology lab to conceive multiple embryos. Now IPs often have an IVF clinic in their area that they've worked with in the past, uh, but if you don't have a preferred clinic, your surrogacy agent can certainly recommend one. Uh, and very often, uh, your agent will have a negotiated fee or some other benefits of working with a particular clinic. Now, in vitro literally means in glass, which refers to the laboratory glassware used in the fertilization process. And once conceived, the embryos are incubated until they are ready for transfer to your surrogate. And at that point, the embryos can be put into storage, frozen at the clinic until your surrogate uh, is ready for the next step. Now, the IVF starts with excellent eggs and sperm uh, that are donated by the intended parents. Now, there's more on donations can be found in the surrogacy guide, but here is a summary of what you should know. Sperm donation is easy and it can be done in an afternoon. Egg donation is more complex and it requires about two weeks of hormone treatments called ovarian stimulation. A successful stimulation will result in many mature and healthy eggs to retrieve, right, which will then translate to many healthy embryos to transfer. The more eggs that are retrieved, the more embryos will be fertilized and the better are your chances of a pregnancy. Now within the donor's ovaries are these fluid filled sacs called follicles and a healthy follicle contains one egg. And under normal circumstances, one follicle matures each month and the egg is released uh, at the midpoint of the woman's menstrual cycle. But in an IVF cycle, stimulation treatments are used to force the maturation of multiple follicles within the ovaries. Uh, the fertility doctor then uh, retrieves the contents of each follicle uh, and then once collected, the contents of the follicles are examined to see how many contain eggs and how many of those eggs were adequately matured. A typical donation may retrieve 12 to 15 follicles, which could provide 10 to 12 mature eggs, which could then result in eight viable embryos, um, <clears throat> of which three of those you know, may be of very good quality and ready to transfer. Now, some younger donors and very fertile donors may provide 20 follicles or more. You know, on the other hand, women who are older, who are in their, 30, in their 30s and 40s, may have just one or two follicles to retrieve. Uh, and while it's true that a single embryo can result in a successful pregnancy, um, becoming pregnant often requires several attempts. Right? The reality is that a typical embryo transfer uh, has a success rate of just 45% in an average IVF clinic in the US. Now a top tier surrogacy specialized clinic has a pregnancy rate probably around 75 to 80%. And most overseas clinics, they hover around a 65% pregnancy rate. Now this is important. A successful egg donation is probably the biggest success factor in your entire surrogacy journey. A good donation uh, with many eggs will conceive many high quality embryos. And each embryo is a chance for a successful pregnancy. A poor donation, maybe because your donor was older or had fertility problems, will produce very few embryos uh, and then the entire surrogacy journey becomes a crapshoot. So if you're on a limited budget, 
Choosing an excellent egg donor is probably the place where I would suggest investing most heavily. Right? She likely will mean the difference between the success and failure of your journey. Now then, immediately after the eggs are retrieved, they are fertilized with the genetic father sperm. Uh, and fertilization is most often done through a technique called intercytoplasmic sperm injection, or ICSI. It's an ICSI procedure. In an ICSI procedure, healthy sperm cells are selected under a microscope and then they're injected directly into the egg. The benefit is that men don't need a huge sperm count or to have superhuman sperm, right? You really only need a few healthy sperm cells. Uh, and many men with low sperm count can have successful IVF cycles using ICSI. Now, human eggs do not freeze as well as sperm or embryos, so I always recommend that you fertilize all of the eggs that are retrieved during your donation. Uh, and in my experience, frozen eggs have about an 80% survival rate during freezing and thawing, while frozen embryos have over a 90% survival rate. So don't freeze your eggs, right? Finish the IVF cycle and freeze all of the embryos instead. And once the eggs have been retrieved and fertilized, then they're left to develop in an incubator for five days, uh, and at that time, most embryos will have advanced to what's called a blastocyst stage. Blastocyst is the developmental stage just before an embryo begins to attach itself to the uterine wall. The quality of embryos are often rated on a three-point scale called a Gardner scale. 5AA would be excellent, 2CC would be just about the worst. The first number refers to the developmental level of the embryos. It's a number from one to six, with one meaning that the embryo hasn't developed at all, uh, and six meaning that it's already developed to the point where it's hatched and is trying to attach itself already to the uterus. The two letters refer to structures of the embryo and the cell components, right? The first number is the outer shell of the embryo, and the second number refers to the inner grouping of cells, right? These are rated A, B, or C. And suffice to say, you want a lot of A's and B's and very few C's. Uh, your clinic may keep poor quality blastocysts in storage, um, but they also may just discard them. It really depends on their policy. But on day five, the clinic will present the parents with a summary of their IVF procedures showing the final quality grade of all of the surviving embryos. Uh, and in a typical IVF cycle, around 30% of the fertilized eggs should develop into viable blastocysts. And at the blastocyst stage, the embryos must either be transferred into the surrogate's uterus or frozen for transfer later on. Most often they'll be frozen while you look for your surrogate. Now, during the embryo development, you may choose to have what's called pre-implantation genetic screening performed on the embryos. You know, PGS, sometimes known as PGT or PGD, uh, there are genetic terms for several different tests, but they work pretty much the same way. Right? They all take a few cells from each embryo and they check them to see if they have a complete set of chromosomes. At its most basic, PGT uh, or PGS is a test for conditions like Down syndrome. The analysis will flag any embryos with missing or transposed chromosomes that would either not develop or develop uh, into unhealthy blastocysts or fetus. Uh, because PGT examines the sex chromosomes, it will also determine if the gender of the baby. PGT can take days or weeks to get the results back. Uh, and so the test requires that all the embryos be frozen while the results are processed. And once the PGT results are back, then you'll have a complete record of the success of your IVF cycle. And at that point, usually the next step is to find your surrogate uh, and get ready for an embryo transfer. Now you can watch the next video in the series on finding your surrogate, right? There are also other videos on a variety of topics related to your surrogacy journey. Um, and of course, you can always find information in the surrogacy guide at sensiblesurrogacy.com or you can send us a note and ask a question uh, of one of our consultants. Either way, we're available to guide you through your surrogacy journey. Just let us know how we can help.